Today we'll be replacing the timing belt, water pump, cam seals, crank seals, idler tensioner pulleys on a 97 Toyota Avalon. So we're going to start by removing as much as we can from the top of the engine before we go to the bottom to remove the belts and the crankshaft pulley. Usually there's a lot of corrosion buildup. Sometimes you have to wiggle this off, but this just came right off, no problem. Now I'll be removing this wiring harness away from the upper timing belt cover. This has been detached from a previous timing belt job. So I'll take this bungee cord, keep the cable away from the timing belt cover. Okay, I'll we'll detach these ground straps. We'll detach this coolant line. So we're going to loosen up the alternator pivot bolt and adjustment bolt so we can get the accessory belt off. And the adjustment bolt is over here. Let's see if we can remove the crankshaft pulley bolt. This is a 22 millimeter bolt. I use this high mass impact socket made by Leslie. Then I'll generate the torque to take that bolt off. Okay, no problem there. And then we'll take a brass hammer and tap the edge here. And that should relieve the tension on the belt. Let's see if that goes enough. There we go. Now I just got to tighten it up and pull the pulley out. So this is how the timing belt cover is oriented. The bottom cover that goes over the top cover. So we have four bolts, one, two, three, four, and we have one, two, three, four, five bolts over here. Now we we'll remove these 10 millimeter timing belt cover bolts. We have to use a mechanical tool. Now we'll take the top cover off. Now remove this bracket by sliding this bracket off the alternator pivot bolt. This bolt over here you leave on. This comes off with the side motor mount. So let's see if we get this off. It has to clear these two studs. Okay, so this stud remains in. All right, so I'm removing this big washer temporarily reinstalling the pulley bolt so I could turn the crankshaft to the top dead center mark. That dot with the little hump on the top, that indicates perfect alignment, top dead center. Now that everything's lined up, we can now remove the timing belt and we do that by removing the belt tensioner. And you don't just take one bolt completely off, you do it gradually because this is under tension. So 
So this is a number 10 hex socket. We'll be removing the tension up pulley. All right, here's the tensioner pulley. It has this washer here, has a pivot point. Do not lose this washer when you're putting on a new pulley. Now we're removing the eyewear pulley using a 14 millimeter socket. Tap it. Just keep in mind, this is for the left bank. Okay, the right bank, which is the one we haven't taken off, is facing this way with this timing mark. Look at that. Got in there now. Now I just need a leverage point. Whoa! Look at look at this. This is like falling apart. It's all dry rotted. Look at that. Whoa. For the lower crankshaft seal, I use my paint can remover and I use a long half inch extension for leverage to pull on it. Now I just pull there. Use some dielectric grease, cut the seals, and then install the new seals. And then I use my seal insulation tool. And this will ensure uniform tension on the seal so it will seed in without getting lopsided. When you feel a little tension build up when you're pushing on the seal, that means the seal's seated. And also the cup, the cup will move a little bit, indicating it's seated. This only requires finger pressure to seat it in. If you can't get in with your fingers, you could take a PVC pipe of equal diameter and press it in that way. So we're dealing with four bolts and two nuts to take off the water pump. There we go. We gotta angle it out to clear these studs. On the Avalon, I was able to get it off without having to raise the engine or to remove the studs. OEM Ishin water pump and it comes with a stainless steel gasket with a rubber sealant on the inside edge here and these have never failed every time I've used it. So you don't have to reinforce it for TV.
I apply the final torque with a quarter inch 10 millimeter socket wrench. It provides just the right amount of torque to tighten up the nuts and bolts without shearing the bolt or the studs. The cam slipped a little bit, so I'll reposition it. So what we do is we move the camshaft back a little bit. And then I clip it. This is loose, just a little bit loose. There. So these two timing marks should be in a perfect alignment. I'll just put a little dielectric grease in here. Right there. I'm going to move the crankshaft one cog counterclockwise so I can mount the belt on with slack. Okay, so we got this much slack, right? Okay. So that's going to prevent the belt from slipping off the cogs of the crankshaft pulley. Now if I turn the crankshaft clockwise, we'll relieve the slack and bring it to top dead center. So we're in alignment here, we're in alignment in the rear, and we're in alignment on the crank. Now we'll take the clips off. I don't have to pre-compress the tensioner, I just mount the tensioner on and then applying equal tension on both bolts, they'll put pressure on the center tensioner and then it'll be seated in. There. Trick is to get the bottom one over here in this corner mounted first. And then the top one in. Boom! There. The top timing belt cover on first because the lower belt covers the top over at these two points.
This taps on the bolt. That moved it up into the maximum adjustment position. There. Okay. See that? So I gotta apply tension over here while I tighten up that bolt. That's better. So I should be able to turn the belt around 30, 40 degrees. Don't want to make it too tight. Mess up the bearings in your alternator and AC compressor. Here. Now we just have to add coolant. Okay, now we'll start the car. And we're done.